Welcome to Business Foresight. This is the Expert Corner. Due to public demand, John Kinuthia, Chairman and CEO, Chief Executive, Strategies and Solutions, is back on the Expert Corner. Welcome, brother. Thank you very Once much. Once again. Thank you very much. Yes. Asante. Karibu. Now today, John, mm. let's look at, top, at technology mm. and its role in business. Walk us through. When I was a systems engineer in the 90s, technology was a support function in a business. <clears throat> it was overhead. Technology was a different um, sort of uh, line within the business that cost the business money, but was not client facing, it wasn't mission critical, it wasn't primary to the business. Today, technology is everything. And um, there's been a huge trans tra transition from when technology was just an IT shop yes. so hidden somewhere in the basement of the building uh, to where technology is central today. Most of your customers are technology savvy. Most of them will find you online. Most of them will Google or uh, in any other way uh, go to an internet browser to find your business. Many of them will engage in e-commerce with you. Mm -hmm. uh, technology is right at the heart of business. Most businesses today have an online platform. Most of them have a smartphone uh, or mobile application platform. And most of them have sort of uh, a, a mobile sort of uh, ready application. So today's business is transacted uh, through technology. And of course, the back office that supports business today is uh, fundamentally and primarily uh, focused by technology, brought together by technology. Technology is right at the heart of it. So uh, a, a business person, a business owner, a business entrepreneur, a commercial corporate business cannot uh, do without uh, technology. Indeed, uh, a business entrepreneur or a businessman or woman cannot function in today's society without technology. They have to be technology savvy. Speaking of technology, mm -hmm. what kind of technology are we looking at here? Very good question. So, today's technology is uh, diverse. From the big stuff that blows your mind, like uh, the Internet of Things, yeah. big data and yeah. all that, uh, to the everyday common use technology, which is your smartphone. Uh, a phone that is capable, in fact a lot of people think a smartphone is a phone, there's nothing that is uh, a phone anymore uh, about a smartphone. The analog phones used to be uh, phones. Today it's a computer, it's a mini computer yeah. that processes uh, calls and, uh, and data like any other computer. So today's technology you're looking at your smartphone, you're looking at devices uh, that people use like uh, iPads, uh, I, um, uh, iPods which are used for music, uh, you're looking at smart gadgets, basically, that people use on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, technology is in three formats, really. You have the uh, business technology, which is uh, your personal computer, uh, which a lot of people today are using the, the laptop or some sort of tablet or some sort of uh, uh, mini supercomputer device at the office. Uh, there's a second level, which is uh, consumer technology, which again goes all the way from uh, your, uh, your smartphone uh, to uh, your music device, be it an iPod or some other uh, music device, uh, to the smart uh, tablets and uh, other related like an iPad which people use, and then uh, to your everyday uh, gadgets that people will engage in different places, your point of sale systems and, and, and all that. All, all of that kind of, uh, they span the space between consumer and uh, business technology. And then there's, uh, on the consumer side, there's the individual technology that people use, which is, uh, again, uh, you'll see a lot of young people today with, uh, with the headset, earphones, yes, yes, yes. earphones and all that. They're listening to music or some sort of device. People are listening to uh, football matches uh, on their phones. So technology encompasses all those smart digital devices uh, on which uh, business is conducted today and uh, upon which people rely for day-to-day -day activities on a daily basis. From your computer in the office and the servers, the back and the back office that drives that and uh, we could talk uh, all the way to data centers and uh, terabytes worth of uh, 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 data being stored somewhere and transacted on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, think of yourself as a bank. For you to make a simple bank transaction, there's that uh, 
heavy back office part with the servers exchanging information. Yeah. These are uh, ATM machines, which again are a front end to uh, that back office transaction. Think of uh, computers in the business where you go in front of a retailer cashier and they type in into a, a, a keyboard and they have a, an, an interface. And then think of yourself doing uh, mobile banking, for example. Think of yourself going to an application and typing in your PIN. Think of yourself going to an ATM, removing money. Uh, think of yourself going online. So all these things encompass technology being used in business and in the personal lives of people. Mm -hmm. So it's a very wide term. Mm -hmm. mm. So now how do we get our bosses to embrace technology? Because we are aware of the fact that we are not, not all of us are young. Yes. We have um, our fathers, our, mm. uh, our grandfathers yes. who are still managers yes. and CEO yes. in certain companies. Yes. We want them to embrace technology. How yes. do we get them to embrace this particular technology? That's an excellent question. So that question can be answered in three parts. The yeah. first one, a lot of executives today, irrespective of generation or gap or age, mm. have embraced technology and are very happy to use it once they use it. Uh, the second part of the question uh, sort of encompasses uh, a business culture. How do we get executives in a business? Traditionally, and even up to today, one of the biggest challenges in business, which I speak to uh, in conferences and all that, is aligning technology with the business. Getting the executives to understand what goes on in the technology world, and then getting the techies uh, uh, to understand the business side of things and to articulate uh, technology projects in business terms. So that from a corporate perspective is its own challenge. And then the third one is, it applies really to everybody irrespective of age. There are young people today uh, who may not be as technology savvy as their counterparts. There are people in business today who may be technology savvy, but they're only using it on a personal basis. When it comes to business, some people don't trust te technology. Uh, there are things like cloud today, where you have to put your data somewhere up there in the cloud. And there are cultural issues. I mean, from the biggest, uh, one of my clients was the number one company uh, b b uh, rated by the Fortune uh, Global Fortune 1000 system in the world. And you still find in a lot of businesses today, there are cultural sort of uh, limitations or cultural sensitivities or even cultural health hesitations. As a business culture, we have not adapted one technology or the other. The number one and best way to help somebody uh, uh, embrace technology is to show them the benefits of, of it, all right? So uh, again, it is regardless of age, um, go and ask them, how do you get your money from the bank? I use the bank as a classic example. They say, oh, I have to drive from here to the nearest uh, branch or the nearest ATM. ATM. How much time does it take for you to do that? Oh, it takes uh, me about 25 minutes, uh, assuming no traffic. No traffic yes. Yeah. Uh, and it, how, how, how do you, exactly do you get there? I drive a car, okay, so that car needs fuel. Yeah. So there's a cost, there's a, a, in terms of uh, fuel, time. there's a cost in terms of time, mm -hmm. there's a cost in terms of effort, and a lot else that goes into that. What if I told you you could still do a lot of those transactions you conduct in the same, uh, with the same bank, but using technology? So you actually demonstrate. You can actually go online and type the uh, web address of that bank, uh, log in into internet banking and transact your transaction there. You can go to your uh, smartphone and uh, download the app and show them uh, the app for the bank and how you can wire money from one person to the other, check your balance, uh, send money to your mobile money platform, M-Pesa or whatever it is that you use, Airtel money. And then you can also go to your actual uh, phone and do the phone banking, which is simple, you know, uh, star, uh, uh, you know, start this, 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 that hash, right? And uh, when that code uh, brings up a, a menu, show them, walk through the menu and show them the ease of that. So that's one way, demonstrate the benefits, like many other things. Number two, demonstrate how it saves on those resources they are wasting. The time, the money, yeah. the fuel, yeah. and all that. Demonstrate how that works. And then number three, help them along with that. 
Now, from a, a, a corporate perspective, it's a much harder discussion because uh, in today's world, there are things like cyber security uh, concerns. Uh, in today's world, people are very protective of their data uh, for proprietary reasons. So you have to demonstrate to the board and your executive management that there are still ways they can still keep their data safe. They can still abide by privacy laws and uh, make sure that the, the, the data is safe somewhere. And there's a way to overcome cyber security. Now the onus is on the person uh, selling this to the organization, whether it's at the executive level, the chief information officer, whether it is somebody tasked with that particular uh, uh, a task of, for example, cyber security experts within the business, it's for you to make a business case and say, we will save much more money, we will, uh, we will be able to better secure our assets and yet have the flexibility to do business, which means you still have to sell it. So. Today's um, mobile-enabled uh, business environment uh, is, is a totally different uh, you know, uh, perspective from what it was in the 90s. So companies, it's a two-way street. You have to demonstrate the uh, benefits. You have to tell them how to, you will manage the, the risks. You have to tell them how to mini mitigate uh, those negative aspects that may make them feel not comfortable going to, uh, you know, to such a platform. Now, in terms of cloud, uh, cloud technology and all that, um, the best way to get a company or a business to adopt such technology is what we call hybrid cloud, which means uh, you can tell the business uh, for your proprietary data, for your um, uh, you know, sensitive customer data that you don't feel comfortable lying somewhere on the cloud, we'll have a solution where it lies on local uh, sort of uh, devices for a start, and then on the things where you feel some flexibility, we can put them on the cloud, see how that happens. Or you can walk them through how uh, the cloud is secure today, the risks of being uh, on the cloud, and then make a business case based on the pros and the cons. Now, for the, for the category of people who they're technology savvy, but they don't feel that applies to their business world. Yes. The best way to do that is demonstrate how many, how many more customers they can reach, mm -hmm. the business benefits of using technology, mm -hmm. how quickly they can engage their customers. Get them to imagine a scenario where their customers are unhappy with them. They go online on Twitter, yeah. on Facebook, on social media of every kind and start talking negative things about the company. One, will you know when they're talking? about your company whether for better or for worse for you need to know so that if it's for better you capitalize on that for your marketing for your public relations for your uh, business uh, uses and then if it's negative you arrest it on the spot you listen to your customers you address the problem, the problem. come up with a solution and then communicate back to them to to shut down sort of that conversation not necessarily shutting it down but to tone it down or to address it with a solution let them know here is a solution. So we need to be more real time in addressing uh, those kinds of customer concerns. Not just that, how do you market your product to as many people as possible? Many people forget that business today is still by word of mouth. Yeah. You talk to somebody, they have a good experience, they talk to their brother, their sisters, their spouse, their employer, everybody they meet to. If they're unhappy, they talk a lot more and research shows that uh, there's nothing more dangerous than an unhappy customer mm -hmm. especially women uh, they're, they're known to blog a lot yes, and they'll really true. say it now women are also your best brand ambassadors Ambassador. when they are happy about your product oh, yeah. but uh, whether it's them who do it more or men who do it less at the end of the day, you need to engage your customers. They need to be your ambassadors. And one way or the other, they are talking about you and your business and your product. Mm -hmm. The question is, are they talking positively or negatively? And you need to be part of that conversation. You need to be part of that conversation in good enough time to get the, the feel of it, to participate in it, and to give valuable feedback. If there's a problem, to fix it. If you're doing well, to receive the feedback and keep on improving.